Given the endless amount of accessories for Eura coffee machines, there's only one bolt-on upgrade designed into the coffee machine itself. Today we're going to install and evaluate the Eura Smart Connect device and find out if it's worth the money. Now this is that Smart Connect device that allows you to interact with your coffee machine via an application on your smartphone. I picked this one up from the Eura store on Amazon for about $60. Note that there's also a Wi-Fi variant to this that does the same thing. I'll get into why I didn't choose Wi-Fi later. And there's also a black module that connects to the milk chiller that has nothing to do with this application. We'll do one of the quickest unboxings ever, which includes within the box a manual in a variety of languages as well as the module itself in a smaller white box. And here's the module. The instructions are straightforward because there's really not a whole lot to the installation. Also, the module is keyed, so you can't put it in backwards. This module goes in just behind the reservoir. There's a rubber cap that comes from the factory where the module will be inserted. Actually, it took me two hands to pull this cap off. Given the shape of the module, it can only fit in in one direction. There's no way to put this in backwards or sideways. Press it right into position. I don't want to lose this cap. It probably costs a lot of money, so I'm going to tape it onto the back of the coffee machine for safekeeping. And that concludes the installation. Just have to make sure power's on for the next step. Taking a look at the side of the box where our Smart Connect arrived is a QR code, and we're going to take the smartphone with the camera to scan the QR code and open up that URL, or you could just go to the URL, but we're going to open it up with the QR code. It's going to take us to Eura's page for Joe, which is the acronym for their software, your operating experience, and this is their software that interacts with the Eura. And on the bottom of two more QR codes, or you could hit a button, and we're going to go to the App Store. In my case, we see a cloud because I've previously tested this in other devices, but I'm going to hit install on the cloud. While installing, I can't help but notice it only has 1.8 stars out of 5. Looking at reviews like don't download, not really worth the effort, terrible update, could be better. <laughs> Machine is great, app is terrible. <laughs> app can't make a latte, terrible app. Yeah, so let's see what we're in for. Download is finished, I'll hit the open button now. Now, it wants permission to connect to devices on my local network. I don't need to hit OK for this because I'm not using the Wi-Fi version. So that's not required. But for the Bluetooth version, I would have to hit OK here. So it depends on which version you have. After this, you met with the privacy policy in terms of use. Wow, their privacy policy to use an application on a coffee machine is insane. They even have a children's clause in a coffee machine privacy policy. This thing is nuts. But I'm going to hit accept so we can move forward. Feel free to read it at your leisure. And they also have a terms of service, which is a software terms of service and what have you. So feel free to peruse that as well. Also hitting accept here. Then I hit that final accept button. And we take it to a welcome screen. Which device do we have? I have the Bluetooth one. If we had the Wi-Fi one, there would be a dialogue to provide our router name and password. But with the Bluetooth one, we just need to select the Bluetooth device. Obviously, the coffee machine has to be on to do this for both of them. And we're connecting. It's searching for the device which I've selected. It's the only one that's available. And now it's connected. This doesn't take you home, so now we have to hit the home button and we're at the main screen. This screen starts up with a small tutorial that tells you how to navigate through different types of coffee and edit mode and specialty selection. It's like three pages. By no means a comprehensive tutorial. Let me first say that your states that this product works on the following machines. The Z8, the Z6, the J6, the S8, the E8, the E6, the D6, the ENA8, the Giga X7 Professional, the Giga W3 Professional, the X8, and the WE8. I'll point out right now that the D6 is categorically different than all the other models here because the D6 has no touchscreen display unlike all the others, so I'll speak to that one separately at the end of this video. Before I continue, I'm just going to say that this device will be evaluated through the lens of three basic questions. The first question is, does it add additional functionality? That means, do I get new functionality out of this coffee machine that I would not get without this device? The next question, is this device a value add? Does it make the existing functionality on this coffee machine better to use than it would be without the device? 
And finally, is this something that I'd find myself using on my phone only because I paid $60 for it? Would I be using this if it came with the machine as something that was standard? These are questions I want to think about as I go through the evaluation. I had planned on jumping into the main menu at this point when I had noticed that with the coffee machine on and the phone right next to it, I have the red disconnected rectangle showing in the top right corner of the menu. So I clicked on that icon in the top right corner and it took me to the connection screen and it shows the phone trying to connect to that device over Bluetooth, but not succeeding. And I waited a while, gave it the benefit of the doubt. Eventually I hit the disconnect button and then when it appeared on the bottom, I did a reconnect and it does find the device, it just never connects to it. And I didn't know why it was doing this. I waited a real long time and having no better idea, I thought maybe the empty drip tray was causing an error. So what I did was I decided I was gonna stop and empty the drip tray and try everything again. But that it turns out did absolutely nothing. Not that I was surprised, I didn't think it would. So I decided my last resort, I was gonna close the app and restart it. Not shut it, but completely restart the app. So now I'm waiting for the app to come back up, brand new start. And I noticed it said the device was not connected. Now I'm gonna go over to the device settings in the top right corner. And here's the thing, when I shut off this app last time, I had the device selected. But now it's on the bottom. It says I'm not connected to any device. I need to reselect that device. Before it was selected, I checked this video footage before. So when I start up the app again, I have to reselect which device I want to use. And now I'm selecting the device. That, that doesn't seem right. However, this time, having restarted the app, the device connects and now it works. So very strange, very flaky app. We see a problem here. Moving on, I'll point out that in my review movie, I made an alternate macchiato. And when we look at the screen on the program, we'll see that that alternate macchiato does not appear. That tells me right off the bat that none of the custom drinks that I make can be used via the application. So that's worthless. Moving on, I do know that the milk system needs to be cleaned and I do see this red indication on the top. So I press it. And it does say the milk system needs to be clean. So I will press the clean button on the application, thinking that I could do this from the app. I don't know why I'd want to, but I will. And now I go to the next screen and it says clean the milk system. And we can see the machine reacts to me pressing it. But now there's no further you could go on the app. That's it. That's the end. You have to go to the coffee machine anyway to do the rest. You can only like view a video or a PDF on the app. You can't actually do anything, and why would you want to anyway? Because you need the water and the cleaning crystals measured and under the machine in order to do anything. You couldn't do this remotely effectively. So I'm going to hit start, and now we're going to run it. And as we stand here in front of the screen that's telling us the milk system cleaning is in progress, we're also seeing it on the phone that it's in progress. Why, why is this a thing? Like, what does it matter that the phone is telling us what the screen an inch away from us is telling us? It provides absolutely zero benefit. If I need to view the PDF of video instructions, I can view them online on my phone. I don't need an app connected to the machine to do this. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that every other maintenance item on this machine is equally as useless through the app as the one you're seeing here. So I'm not going to bore you by going through every single one. We're just going to do the milk system one. And that's it, like descaling and whatnot. And obviously, you're not going to do it remotely. Of course, we come to the point where it needs fresh water, which can't be filled up via Bluetooth. So, yeah, here we are. The phone can't know when the water's been replenished, so you end up pressing the next button on the machine anyway. The moment that the milk cleaning finishes, I get a check mark indicating on the app that it's finished. And I'm trying to find a way back to the main menu and there's no back button that takes you to the main menu. I'm sort of stuck here and I'm trying to fiddle my way through it. As you can see here, how do I get back from this milk cleaning system? There's only the devices menu on the top right, view PDF and video instructions. So I hit the devices button because that's all there is and I go back and I wait. How do I do this? 
I realized later after reviewing the footage that if the machine is heating up, the app is not responsive and doesn't provide a back button, and that's the cause. But it doesn't indicate that the machine's heating up in the app. Once the machine finishes heating up, the back button comes back, but it doesn't tell you that, so you don't know what's going on. So I'm going to go through the main menu starting at maintenance, and as we open it up, it looks like the same maintenance stuff we saw in the top right menu. And this is filter change, and it only tells about video instructions or shop. Nothing more. Cleaning, the same thing. Cleaning the milk system, the same thing. If it's blue, it doesn't need to be done. If it's red, it needs to be done. But that's about the usefulness of this, only telling you what needs to be done from your phone, but not being able to really do anything. Hitting the shop button just takes you to your.com and you could do that without this Bluetooth or wireless module. There's nothing inherently special about going to a website. So that's all that function does. Connection takes us to the connection menu. Also an icon on the top right corner that we see in red or green, depending if it's connected or not. I'll point out I haven't had any more weird connection issues since then, but that's the connection menu just repeated here in the main menu. I'll click on settings now and that takes us to two categories, app settings and smart connect settings. Clicking on app settings. It has a couple things, units, countdown, software version, legal notice, data protection, terms of use, only things that are inherently useful if you have the app, nothing that would be useful to the coffee machine itself. So I'll click on Smart Connect settings. The pin for the Bluetooth in this case would probably be wireless settings if you had the wireless one like the wireless networking key. You can update firmware for the module here. I click update and it says it's fully updated, but all this stuff supports the module. None of this stuff is evaluated to the coffee machine, just adding complexity. So now I click on information and information provides the instructions to use this add-on, which would only be needed if you bought it. And the other one is the instructions to use the coffee machine, which is readily available online. The last option here I open up is cockpit, You're reading data from the machine. And as I open up, it's a summary of everything we just went over again. So it's almost like they didn't have enough content to fill the menu. So they're just repeating a lot of content over and over again. So this is the first menu on the bottom left, right? And this is just a recap of everything we've already recapped. The middle menu is this pie chart. We'll open it now. And this one provides statistics, the exact same statistics that the coffee machine provides you from their statistics menu. For comparison, I'm going to click on product counter. We'll see what we got. I get this exact same information from the LCD screen on the coffee machine. And while it's true, the app will let you save this information as a CSV or PDF file. I never found the need to do so. The same exact thing could be said about the maintenance counter, which provides identical information on the machine. The button on the right is for tips, most likely to fill an empty space that provides more information readily available online. And we also have operating instructions built into the machine to do this task. Last but not least, we have a menu option called order up top, which kind of looks like the other main menu we have. Once you hit add product below, as I've just done, and it's a little strange because it's kind of like the custom drink menu that I was looking for from my machine previously for the ones that I created that weren't there. But if you select a drink, it allows you to choose the specific coffee strength and water and milk as if you're making a, a custom drink because it doesn't copy it over. I guess you make your own selected custom drinks from the menu. And there it is. But it's just called cappuccino. So I thought maybe you hit that pencil and try and name it. You can't actually name it. You can only add a photo of it, which is kind of strange. Why can't you name it, but you can add a photo? You can name it on the machine without any problem. So I added a picture of my Apple II computer, and that is a cappuccino. I, I don't know. Whatever. We'll try adding a second product. This time we'll add an espresso custom made. I'll mess with the numbers and save it. So now I press that play button on the espresso to execute it, and then I cancel it. And it takes me back to that other menu that you have on the main screen. So I go back up to that other menu and back to orders, and it's gone. This is not saving different styles of coffee. This is just a queue. I mean, why would you want a queue for a certain amount of coffee, a certain size that you're going to forget right after you execute it? There's no purpose to this function at all. Finally, I'd be remiss if I didn't point out this button here on the bottom changes it from one cup of coffee per action to two cups of coffee and back. I don't know if that's going to save things here, but worth pointing out. At this point, we come back to the three questions asked in this video. Does it add additional functionality? And the answer is no. It doesn't add any additional functionality that I found in the application. The second question, does it add any value? I haven't seen any value to this device. It only cost me money and didn't do anything for me. Would I use it if it came stock or is it just a gimmick? 
the coffee machine doesn't have to be remotely operated. I think that's the whole point here. As a matter of fact, even the app couldn't find enough content to fill the app itself visually. So it had to repeat a lot of stuff in different areas of the application like we saw to give it more visual appeal. And the functionality that it actually had with a queue for selected stuff, the inability to copy over your specialized coffee from the machine made it uh, absolutely useless. There's no function to it at all. Now, if you happen to have a D6 that has no touchscreen, there may be some value in this device, though this machine was designed to operate perfectly without this device. I'm just saying that there may be more value in this device if you have a D6. But if it came with a touchscreen, your model, you don't need it at all. If you think this add-on is amazing and I'm completely off base, let me know in the comments below why you think I'm wrong and what you use this device for that I haven't found after going through this application. And that concludes this video on the review of the Eura Smart Connect and its companion application, Joe. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. It helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When the next video comes out, a link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?